Hey everyone, it's Chad again and welcome back. Today we have this Focus ST and we're doing headlights, but we're smoking them out with the smoked paint protection film. Currently I have the medium shade. They come in three different shades. There's light, medium, and also dark. On headlights, the medium is always best. When we use the tail light tint, we also prefer using the medium just because it gives it that nice, sweet look. We got the car in a few hours ago. It was dropped off to us by the client and we requested the client to leave it with us for a little bit. It's very cold outside right now. It's probably like 30 degrees. So I wanted the car to sit down and, and warm up. So we brought it inside. It's been sitting for a few hours. Now the headlights are warm and that's very critical because I want the material to stick as much as possible. What you see right here, this is a piece that I have. There are actually two templates are cut out on the section that we have. I'm gonna take you over here to this uh, table that I have and I'm gonna weed out the excess material and then expose the pieces that we're gonna be using. The way we have it set up is the blade cuts very nice and deep. It doesn't cut the back end, but it cuts enough of the material that we're going to use where we can easily remove the excess film. We aren't going to be doing the fog lights or anything else. Uh, we were going to be doing the tail lights, but I'm going to show you there's a reason why we're not being doing the tail lights this time. Um, cameraman you can follow me here sorry messy shop but the tail lights were going to be done but this is an issue that we're facing is the tail light is chipped there's a, a broken piece on here uh, the client e wasn't even aware of it uh, they dropped it off and then we called them after uh, we noticed it and they said oh we didn't even notice it uh, let us replace the tail light and then went to <coughs> and when the tail light is replaced they're going to bring it back and we're going to smoke out both tail lights but now we're going to be doing the headlights here currently I have two pieces, uh, one for the left and one for the right headlights. I am gonna be prepping the headlights thoroughly, clean them up, there's a bunch of bugs and scratches. I'm also gonna clay bar the headlights. Uh, this is probably a 2019, 2018, 2015, I don't know what year this car is. So I've seen a lot of miles and I've seen a lot of rock chips and I've seen a lot of bugs. So that has to be cleaned up so I can apply this on the cleanest surface possible. Before we start cleaning or doing anything, let's do some 50 push-ups to keep the blood flowing. Now we can get to work. Now I'm gonna be starting the prep process. The prep process includes several steps. The first one is I'm gonna wipe them down and then I'm gonna be clay barring them the headlights with our Midnight Protex clay bar. After that, I'm gonna be using isopropyl alcohol on the headlight to degrease them and then I'll be transferring the paint protection film and apply it. What I just sprayed right now, I just sprayed soap and water. The soap that we use, you can use dish soap, you can use baby soap, you can use any soap that you can find. Uh, that's what I be, it was using, I was using just uh, baby soap. Uh, we also use that, that's our, our tint solution. Our tint solution is a little bit more slippery than our uh, pain protection film solution. Uh, typically the way we measure, this is a larger bottle. I believe this, this is a 48 ounce. For the 32 ounce, we use one drop, which our bottle, you know, it's, it's a Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo bottle. And uh, it's just got like the pump on top. One pump for the 32 ounce. Typically this one is about a, you know, a pump and a half for the pain protection film solution. But for the tint, Typically for the 32 ounce, there's a 48, for a 32 ounce, it's between four to five pumps. Some people use six to eight. It just depends on the installer and also depends on the temperature. If it's colder outside, we typically use less slip, but if it's warmer outside, we use more, you know, soap, just so the material can float around and it does not dry because if it's warmer. So now I'm just gonna be clay bar and I'm using our tint solution. And after that, I'm gonna be uh, applying the alcohol. When you clay bar, always make sure your area is extra, extra slippery. That way it doesn't dry out and also the clay bar does its best job. These are rough, I can hear them. But again, the car has no idea how many miles I can find that out for you. But I believe it has at least 40,000 miles. I believe they stopped making the fourth Focus in 2019. Uh, maybe 18, I'm not sure, but definitely in 2020. So now we did our clay barring process. Uh, again, I was talking about 
when Ford stopped making sedans and hatchback, this is a hatchback, I believe in 2018 or 2019, uh, I don't think in 2020 they had anything. No, I believe they did have uh, the Ford Fusion, but definitely right now, I don't think there is any sedans, no Fusion, no, um, what's that thing, that longer one? The show, Taurus, no Taurus. They have no Taurus, they have no Fusion, they have no, Fiestas, they have no focuses. The Escape is technically this car with taller suspension, so more ground clearance. And it's just the way it's designed, it's just a little bit taller, but they call it SUV. Anyways, now we sprayed the alcohol. The alcohol that we have is like 99% that's slightly diluted, and I'm gonna be wiping it down. I did modify my templates a little bit. I extended about half an inch all the way across. If I don't, then, uh, which again, if I don't, then that will be for the clear PPF. There will be a gap slightly, about like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch, all the way around, but extended by half an inch, so I can get the full coverage. Uh, now it's alcohol, I'm gonna wipe it down one more time with a cleaner towel, uh, not, like, not this one, and then transfer it, and uh, we'll show you side by side, and you guys can tell how it looks like. Like I said, the cleaner towel, we have to use that cleaner towel, like what they say, Happy wife, happy life, something like that. A cleaner towel, better insulation. Yes, we are trying to be professional, but I could not find my blade holder, so I'm just using the blade. This is not OSHA approved. I am a professional. I'm, I'm gonna be cutting myself just doing this. Uh, I am gonna become professional or try to be professional, uh, but I'm gonna be, be using what I have because I need to get the car done and I need to let it sit so the film can dry out, all the edges can be sealed, so when the client drives it, it does not fly off the freeway. There we go, so this is the right headlight, right meaning when I sit inside the car, this is the right side, and uh, let's get it applied. Too late, man. <laughs> it's okay. Now here are my bottles. Uh, one of them is a slip solution, one of them is a tack solution. This one's got but when it's full, one pump of soap, and this one is 70% water and 30% alcohol. The alcohol that we use is 99%. It's uh, industrial grade alcohol, so if you buy the 90% or the 70%, you need to play with the ratio. So if you buy the 70%, you need more alcohol than us using the 99%, because again, we use more uh, water because our alcohol is more concentrated. As I peel, I always spray my fingers so I don't leave fingerprints on the adhesive. Now I'm gonna peel my material. Again, this one is uh, slightly extended so I can get full coverage. But again, it's, it is kind of tricky headlight. We struggle applying this headlight even when we just do the clear film. So now I'm just aligning the edges, lock this one in place. The headlight PPF, it tends to be less aggressive, which is the adhesive. It doesn't stick as hard as the, you know, the clear or like the, the satin PPF. That's why I want to allow time for it to dry out um, before we hand it out to the client so it doesn't fail. It is locked in place, which is nice. On this specific headlight, it's very simple, and honestly, for most headlights, it's probably the same step. You always wanna start from the inside, which is the inside is towards the grill. You start from that area, you lock it in place, and then you stretch out. Certain headlights don't really need any stretch, like Lamborghini headlight or uh, Tesla headlight, they need a little bit of stretch, but there's a lot of headlights that are completely flat, like Camaro headlights, don't need any stretch. You just lay that thing and then squeeze it down. But this one is more challenging. It's got a curve like this and up this way and also out that way. So we always have to lock it from this side and stretch everything out. So look what I'm talking about right here. When we stretch it because we have all this material on these sides, when I stretch out, it flattens out. And you will face the same thing when you do yours because you can buy these templates from me. I'm gonna list the link below and you can just tell me what car you have, exactly what car you have. Like if it's a, a C43 AMG, cool? You need to make sure you tell me it's a 2018 C43 four-door 
I need the headlights for it. So as you can see, I am putting a lot of pressure on this side to hold it in, in place. I'm just squeezing everything out. It would be easy if I was using the clear film, but like I said, the tinted one is not as aggressive when it comes to the adhesive, so it doesn't bite as fast as the clear one. Now I'm gonna let it sit a little bit. Like you can see, I have it extended by half an inch and I stretch it even more. I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit, let it dry out, do some trimming. I just want it to like bite and then do some trimming and then let it sit for a little bit more and then we ship it back to the client. Um, now you can slightly see the difference between this one and the clear one, which is uh, on that side. Uh, cameraman, you should be able to show them what we're talking about. We have a side by side, so you can see this is the clear, it's ugly and gross, and this is the tinted one. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks even shinier because, you know, it's, it's not as chipped up as that one looks. We're pretty much like sprayed it with like clear coat that is smoked out. Since the right side is already applied, now I'm gonna be prepping and applying the left side. Then afterwards, I'm gonna be hopping on that one. We'll be right back. So that side is done. Now I'm here to do my trimming. But before I do my final trimming, I'm gonna heat up the edges just to warm it up, soften it up, and push it more down just so when I trim it, it doesn't shrink back and lift. I'm putting on very, very light heat. I'm not trying to burn the film or anything because I can melt it. If I apply too much heat, I can melt it. Like even to the touch, it's barely warm. All right, I got my blade and I got my blade holder. Now I'm gonna be trimming this one out. I'm gonna be trimming it as close as I can to the edges just to get the maximum coverage. Uh, you can hear this uh, squealing noise. I actually like that noise because that's a, a very good indication that I am cutting the film very precisely and not going too deep. The blade that I am using is a sharp carbon blade. That's what it's called. It's called the ABB carbon blade. This is the 45 degree blade uh, that I'm using right now. Uh, that's what I use for paint protection film. Some people use a stainless steel. I personally uh, have more luck with this one. Or I would say I'm just more used to it. Just applying like light pressure. Again, I've done hundreds or even like thousands of cars so I know exactly how much pressure I need to apply without cutting the surface and you can see I'm, I changed my body position I was standing and trimming like that now I'm like this just so I can get the more most precise line uh, I'm not using my pinky to stabilize at the moment now I'm going to remove the excess which is the trimmed out this is what I have. I am gonna squeegee it down one more time. Now I'm gonna be squeegeeing down the edges one more time just to remove any final moisture that's remained on the edges. And I'm gonna take a towel to it to also absorb it and then I'm gonna heat it up. Wrap my squeegee around the towel. Gonna give this one a quick wipe. And now I'm gonna heat up the edges and seal them down. Again, you don't need a ton of heat. You don't wanna melt. The edges, especially right now, there's still moisture underneath. It's not like fully tacked. All I'm trying to do is just absorb the final moisture and dry it out. That's it. And that's it. If you want to buy the kit, you can go to the website, midnightprotects.com, and you can also get some detailing project from there.